Culture is the identity of a group of people. It may be their way of doing things which is peculiar. It may be their sculpture, their language, their beliefs, way of doing things, or even way of dressing. The grass field of Cameroon has kept a peculiar, very rich culture, which has made them noticed in the world. Apart from the good volcanic soil that they enjoy, they are not rich in minerals and other raw materials. So the people have preserved their rich culture, not just as a way of life today, but attracting tourists and even business to them. The western part of Cameroon is rich in almost all artistic creativity, painting, carving, crafting, weaving, making, and many others. When I began uh, my musical career, in those days we used to interpret uh, uh, Congo music, East African twins. And uh, when I left for Nigeria, we had to continue with high life. And when I came back from Cameroon, I discovered that after Makusa, the Yaoundé man came up with a Bikushi to identify uh, 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 their own culture. And, and uh, I later discovered that the Bamineke man came up with the Chamasi, the Ben Sikin, and so on. So uh, when I came back from Nigeria, I met Francis Ndom, the late Francis Ndom, who has uh, been in the field for some time and decided to adapt the, 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 our own culture with the dresses because it's, it's difficult for, for you to dance in Jang while, meanwhile wearing a suit. So I myself, in order to identify myself and to our culture, in fact, I took a decision that no matter how long it was going to take me because the beginning was not easy, we, the, uh, the other side of the country, they were looking uh, at our own culture in the northwest province as if it is something that cannot sell. So I took upon myself to, to really, uh, 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 after a long struggle, to adapt and to let these dresses, to promote these dresses so that it will match with the traditional music, with the kind of traditional music from the grass field that I'm playing. The Northwest region is also known for a peculiar dress that has become a symbol to the whole nation recently. The Bamenda clothes, Bamenda dress, Ngrafi dress, Northwest dress or Adogo has become the symbol for Cameroonians as a whole. In the international scene, they are seen in all occasions putting that dress on. Adogo is now the talk of the present day design from Cameroon. I've been using these dresses everywhere when I go on stage until when uh, Colonel Kalkaba, who, was, uh, who is the national president of the Olympic Committee, uh, invited me to produce these dresses for the Cameroonian delegation for the Olympic Games in China for the first time. And that was when the majority of the Cameroonians fell in love with these dresses again, not only uh, 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 the Northwesterners were going to China, but the Yewondo man, the, even the Hausa people, they had to wear this dress. And when they came back from China, now the promotion or the, the dress took another dimension. Every Cameroonian now was in need of these dresses. And uh, in fact, as I'm telling you here, even the Duwala man now and the Duwala women, they are armed very, very anxious to wear because I have produced uh, some of the, uh, the models in Kaba, which I am going to give you now. Um, uh, we have the Kaba, which I have just uh, introduced again into the market, and the thing is moving. So uh, you see that as an artist and as a fashion designer, as I told you earlier, that so many people are producing these dresses, but they don't have the access and the, 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 uh, to promote it on the media like myself. They don't have the opportunity to showcase it like myself. And, and that is why uh, I am a suit specialist. But in the past seven, eight years today, 
I have been considered as a traditional fashion designer because I have done a lot of promotion and even some media, some Chinese delegation came to interview me and took photos of these dresses but arriving there they could not they try to produce something but since this one is made out of hand but you cannot make a machine a machine that will be creating patterns every day they try to produce something that will resemble this one but uh, it do not it do not work so uh, in fact is um, i took it as a duty for me to sell our culture and fortunately for me uh, one of the greatest presidents in the world, that is Obama, is putting up a dress from my workshop here. Somebody approached or nearer to the White House, came, bought the dresses here, passed the command, and he didn't know that uh, the, the, dresses, the dress was going to be worn by somebody. So it was after when he called for me and asked me to go to the net and see who is putting up my dress. So in fact, I have been crying for salvation to get in touch with the man to let him know that, to let Obama know that I am the producer of the dress that he is putting on, but to no avail. So I want to believe that the dress, the culture, our Northwest culture has gone far and far away to reach the United States and uh, as I said earlier, one of the greatest presidents in the world is putting up my hand. Yeah. This one we are seeing is called Dan Chicken. It's been done by this. Or oh, everybody, the young men, they like to put on this one. It's a simple well. When you are going to church, just putting on with a black trouser and a black shoe. And this one, this one is called Jumpa. Everybody puts on this one. You can put it on up and down. You can still put it on the up with the black material trousers. Then this big one, this one. Show the show. First one. It's and a blouse. Everybody puts on this skirt and blouse. Especially young guys like me. I like but this skirt and blouse. I don't like this big one on my body like this. I like the biscuit and blouse. Then, this one is called Dani. Everybody puts on this one. Especially young men. Put on this one like this. With the other attachment on that. They call it the mushu. Then this one like this. This big traditional regalia. Everybody put on this one, especially for, for example, like my father, he has this big one like this. When he's going somewhere, like a marriage ceremony, even church, he put on this one like this, with the cap and the, and the neck. Thank you. Despite its many names referred to, in that region, Oral tradition says the Balis were the first to do this dress. Almost all villages in the Northwest region have a claim to the Atogo dress. But if you go detailing with the designs, it would be recognized that some of these claims are true because the villages align with the ancestral figures and designs that could be seen on the dresses. For instance, things like this gum. This one is done. Okay. So it's mostly for Taiti people or people from the palace who are from Gumba, all those things. It's not everybody that uses this title. This gun. If you wear it like this and go to the village, of which your father or you don't have any title of this sort, you will have a fine to pay. Okay. So we'd like to make something that will be for selected people, which will be more expensive. Okay. Yeah, you know, the culture, when it started when our forefathers, they were so gentle, they came out from, from the chambers. So they know that what to differentiate themselves with others. So they created their own, these caps have their own way. 
they, they go along with the wear, uh, the cloth. That's why it signifies it's more important. The Norway is uh, and now the other people have come, come, uh, come taking the tradition to their own province regions. My father, when I asked, because I was so inquisitive, I asked my father that I would teach you how to make this cap. My father told me he's one of the uncle. The uncle they brought it from Chamba. It's the thing many years, centuries ago. So I cannot really give the roots of it. But I just know that my father told me the, the elders came from this camp. They came from Chamba with this camp. So that's why we are coming here. Yeah, when I talk of the Chamba, it's the origin of the seven bodies. That's where the, the forefathers, that, this was their handwork. That's why I always insist on the Chamba Chamba. Because the Chamba that brought this cap in the, into the Northwest region, when they came and settled and started doing it. Uh, this uh, traditional dress, which is uh, commonly called uh, Dala in, in the Kom language, the other tribes. Uh, they have another way of calling it. It's originated from the Northwest province. And uh, before, uh, the, 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 the dresses from Bale Kumbat and Bale Nyongo used to be identified. And the, especially the one from Kom uh, used to be identified, even up to today, because the one from Kom that I don't have it here was created by uh, one of uh, the fonts of Kom who was at the same time a cover. Uh, what, what happens to carve the statue of Afuakom that uh, people know, the same time a tello. So uh, you see today uh, the dress is almost everywhere. You cannot identify, you have to find them in the Bamileke land, so and so on. The beauty of the Atogo could be very flashy. They look alike, but not all are the same. Every one of these dresses and marks on them have a peculiar meaning worn by particular people and on particular occasions only. This dress is very important uh, to the palace because it is the culture, it's the culture of the people. When we talk about ancestors, it's difficult to, 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 to get a phone from the northwest region wearing a coat, be it in the palace or outside the palace. So, uh, the same thing as I said from the man in the north, when you go out there, you see the Lamidos, they are wearing the dresses, and everybody who is around the Lamido is wearing the Gari, what is commonly known Gari, uh, respecting the culture of the people. So, the importance, and you see that when once there is a ceremony in the palace, you can wear a suit and go in to the palace. You must look for one of the dresses, even the cheaper one, to wear, to be, at least, to be part of the culture. Of course, in town, it can be bought by anybody, but if you are to go in your own village, of which you know your tradition, the type of dress must be worn by a princess or somebody, some woman who is married to, either a shinda or something like that. Like the fonts, you know, the fonts, they have their designs. The one with the tiger like that, the, other, the one with the design with the gong, the one is not even here, the design with the gong. That one is mostly for the fonts. Okay, I've done dresses of fun and for the fun of, um, the fun of, um, the We have the one that is, is, is being put up by the chiefs, by the fawns, because we have fawns in the Northwest province, that is the one with the moon behind, the one with the moon behind, the moon, and we have another one being put up by Nchindas, that is the notables. We have the simple ones like this one that everybody can wear. So I don't know whether is it because people cannot afford for money to buy, but we have the simplest one that everybody can buy. The dang chickies, what we call the dang chickies, the one that has no hands, and just the simple one that somebody is going out, he can wear it just to identify himself. So, uh, there's nothing mystical in it. It's just that the ones, you need to know if you are closer to the palace, 
You need to know the one that you can wear and the one that you cannot wear. Like the one that is commonly called Ndop, is being worn by the kingmakers. Not everybody can, can wear it. So that is the one that even in the Bamiliki land is not, if you are not connected to the palace, you cannot wear that particular one. But these ones are just the simple ones. The Atogo is very, very difficult to make. It takes many days to produce just one of them. This reason is because it's handmade. Despite the invention of some mechanized Atogo, the difference is very clear, as the handmade ones are more, more durable. As inventions come, the makers of Atogo have been able to make new designs. Some of them fit modernity. The colors and materials remain the same, but the designs have changed. Of course, there are so many materials. This one is so-called Deng material. We bought it in the market, in the main market. So this one is so expensive. The former one that we used to do is this one, so-called Piga. That's the one they close mostly on today. So now this one is more brighter than this. So we are basing now on this a togo has many accessories. They usually go with special bags, caps, necklaces, and even bangles. These items too have rules, laws, and some are worn by very special people and on very special occasions. This one, as you see, like this, is black and white. It's being put on by the band so kingmakers. Then the one on my right, call it the South African cap. That is being put on by all the ladies. Where you put on something like this and put it on, put on this big cap. It's called the South African cap. Then this other small one, the black and white. It's also it's been put on also by the band so title. Women, they call them the yes. They have been put on this. They put on this cap. Yeah. <laughs> then the one on my head, as you can see, everybody puts on the, this one on my head, especially the princess. This one on my head. A togo, the Bamenda dress, and other artistic creations from the northwest region of Cameroon have not been very lucrative. They may be well known home and abroad. But they make just some penny from the long hours that they spend in making these special dresses. For this particular material, at times we can sell this for the first time. When we go to the market to look for the very material, we cannot get it. So for that, if we have a customer, the customer will say we have disappointed him, of which is the material that makes us to be that way. So for the matter of material, they are changing type of material so much. It give us difficulties because you cannot assure customers. Apart from that, the clothes as we are making it like this, it takes a long time to sell. As we are in the market, we can make it, it can stay more than five, six months or even one year for some before they buy. So when you stop money on it, it makes you to feel so reluctant. But we are persevering because it's the only way that we are trying our best. At times when they buy, when they buy, we are satisfied because we sell it in a good price. When we sell, we feel good. Sometimes, because as we are here in the market here, if person comes, for instance, small and medium enterprise was trying to bring us together, but when we are there, when program come, they select people. So we just remain here when we have customer. If it is a meeting group, we concentrate with them. Those who come, we save them. But as we don't have means, we base on where we are. Since it's handmade, you know. It takes a lot of time to get to, to get one complete like this because it's handmade. It's, that's it, it is only way. It's traditional design, handmade. So it has no two ways to go about it. It's handmade. Handmade. I the first stitch to the next. That's how you do it. You first start by drawing. You get the material. You stitch. You tell us stitches. I design it. I draw it. Then I start designing it. So it's good to spend your time designing it because you can spend one day and sell two or three dresses. You can get about at least a month or two to 
get the dress content like this. It's very a big one. So you have to spend your time in the work. It's not truly about it. So if someone so like this now like this the dry period. We usually sell during the long vacation of when we did like uh we did people come in, these strangers do the tourists. It's very during the festive period. But like now we keep on stitching the dresses and keep in the bags. Then let's say in November, December, we have all the filmmakers, people come out, family, relatives come, people buy this, this is the end of the year too. To give presents to their loved ones, family members. That's what we usually sell. Like now, like this, and this is no more going. So we're just doing the work. To know the presence of Cameroonians in any occasion, anywhere in the world, is when they put on the Bamenda clothes. Right down to the Cameroonian Olympic team and other groups representing Cameroon abroad, the Togo has been outstanding. For one thing, the Bamenda dress has gone viral. In fact, if I have to regret one thing, I will start first of all from the Northwest region. And uh, because I've been asking questions why some of we artists in the Northwest province are trying to promote this culture, but the elites, some of the elites in the Northwest province who are members of government, they hardly wear the dress. Either it has been instructed that they should never wear the dress because I, I have been expecting that during the, 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 the what do you call in the presidency, uh, during the dinner or uh, after 20th May, I am proud, always proud to see the man from the North putting up a dress that identify, identifies where he comes from. But it's not the same thing with a Northwesterner. We have been watching our elites. I don't know why they don't want to put this dress, even going outside to represent, I don't want to call names, going outside to represent a country, but the dresses is instead admired by superstars in America and some other countries. So you have people who have fallen in love with our culture more than us. And if I have to regret one thing again, when you go to the Yoruba land in Nigeria, you see that the Yoruba child from the birth is growing up with their tradition. I was expecting that even in Bamenda, if people cannot wear these big ones, that from the word go, because my children, I'm bringing up my children with the dresses. You go into Bamenda, you feel a stranger come into Bamenda, he should feel like he is in Bamenda. But hardly you get somebody from the uh, on the road with the dress, except people are going for a ceremony, which is not nice, which is not the best way to promote these dresses. I have done it, done a lot of promotion, and people are coming in from outside country and instead buying our tradition. Take note, many Cameroonians or from the Northwest, when they come to buy a dress, this particular dress for me here, they said they want to offer it to somebody for a stranger. But I always am as a why can't you not buy it and wear it yourself? You buy it to offer it to a stranger. So those are one of uh, some of those things. But what I am happy today is that people are becoming more and more conscious now to uh, to love their culture and they are coming in gradually. It was not like this before, but now almost everybody is coming in to put on this traditional dress. I make some and I have producers who produce some because I'm operator of an art gallery and I have people who want to Well, the difficulty is that there is no market in the sense that tourism this time is at a low key because in the days when the whites were flowing in, we had a nice market, but today they are not forthcoming. And then the problem, the whites not forthcoming, is the difficulty of carrying our Cameroon arts out of government. Unlike in other, other African countries where traditional craft is considered like the people's own industry and they are almost tax free. Our own situation is very difficult because our customers complain of the difficulties of carrying out these ads out of 
country. And the local consumption cannot take all what we are producing. So we pray that if there is a situation that consideration is given to traditional arts to go out of Cameroon like our own industry thing produced locally by our own native, it will boost the economy of the local producers and the villagers who are engaged in this various More recently, new generation designers are taking the country close to another dimension. They have modernized it to international competition and the world keeps liking it. It may be slow to pick up like most of the arts in Cameroon, but it's very steady in growth. I want to end up by appealing to all the Northwesterners, wherever you are, be it in the village, that we should try as much as possible to help some of us trying to promote this culture because the culture is not my culture. I can play my music and I wear a good and I wear any other thing. But since I have a culture of the people to promote, we want you people to help us promote that culture. I can't tell you how many times I'm invited to Baminda to go and animate a cultural uh, festival, be it a gala night or what, and I am putting up a traditional dress, but not even a single person in the hall is putting up a traditional dress. So we are calling on you people to join us in the promotion of this very rich culture in Cameroon.